This episode of the Kill Innovations podcast is brought to you by listeners like you. You can become a supporter by visiting shop.philmckinney.com and making a contribution. Your support helps defray the cost to produce, host, and stream the show. As always, any profits are donated to charities such as hackingautism.org. I'm Phil McKinney, and welcome to Season 11 of the Kill Innovations Podcast, a show about ideas, creativity, and innovation. Had enough of Barbie's dream house? Ever wonder why dolls and tiaras and pink party dresses fill the girl's aisle of the toy store? After one such stroll down the aisle with one of my granddaughters, I was reminded about the stereotypical thinking around girl tech. In one of my previous roles, a team was pitching me on ideas on how to address the girl or women tech market. After watching a parade of product ideas, I stopped the meeting and I chastised the team for thinking that all they needed to do was to pink it and shrink it. As a father of daughters and now with two granddaughters, this one meeting stuck with me as proof of how narrow-minded the tech industry had become. Well, someone else has had enough too. One of my favorite innovation stories is that of the company Goldie Blocks. The founder of the company, Debbie Sterling, has been inspired by a high school math teacher to pursue engineering. She went to Stanford and loved her engineering major. That was until about halfway through when she struggled in an engineering drawing course and was humiliated in front of the class by the professor. It turns out this happens to many female students in the STEM major, such as science, technology, engineering, math. When the work gets more challenging, they start to question whether they, quote, really belong in the field. Men who experience the same academic challenges are less likely to drop out or change majors because they have a strong support system and have gotten the cultural message since childhood that these are, quote, male fields in which they definitely do belong. Despite the setback, as she shared in her TED Talk, Sterling didn't give up. She studied hard and earned her degree in mechanical engineering and product design. And after graduating, she did some research as to why she had struggled in the drawing class. The answer? Like many other girls, she had underdeveloped spatial skills. Why is that? Well, hint, it's not genetic. Girls lose interest in the STEM fields as early as kindergarten because the toys they usually get to play with Don't encourage building spatial manipulation like boy toys, such as Legos, Lincoln Logs, or Rector sets. The toys that are marketed to girls, dolls, makeup sets, cooking kits, put them at a disadvantage in engineering skills from a very early childhood. Simply put, girls are encouraged to be princesses, not builders. After graduating from Stanford, Sterling made it her goal to disrupt the pink aisle with a toy that would get young girls interested in engineering. Worldwide, women make up only about 14% of all engineers. For Sterling, it was time to change that, to invent the self-rescuing princess. Goldie Blocks combined storybooks with construction sets that encourage girls to solve problems by building simple machines. Sterling's ideas was initially shot down by many toy stores who thought her product wouldn't sell. Now let's face it, the track record of success for girl-only tech toys and tech games is not stellar. And like most people in position to fund these new ideas, they relied on the past failures to justify why it wouldn't work now or in the future. So, instead of taking no for an answer, she turned to Kickstarter and reached her funding goal within days. Clearly, there was a hunger for these kinds of toys among parents and young girls. And the company's success has proven it. Sterling turned her personal frustration into a success. She recognized the gap in the market that resulted in her struggling through that drawing class and used that frustration to fuel her passion. Even though experts told her an engineering toy for girls would never be successful, she knew there was something missing from the market and stuck with her idea. Though the market can be a great at fostering innovation, it often gets stuck in the same old self perpetrating ruts. Blue building toys for boys, pink princess dolls for girls, because no one wants to take the risk of exploring other options. Sterling knew she was taking a risk, but did it anyway. 
early struggle and rejection only embolden her in her goal to make it easier for girls to envision themselves as makers, builders, and innovators. Women like Sterling herself. Sterling used her personal struggles as inspiration to fill a huge need in the market. Sometimes learning to innovate not only means overcoming failures, it means really delving into those failures and figuring out why they happened and how to help others like yourself avoid them. If you are a supporter of the podcast, thank you. If you're interested in becoming a supporter, visit shop.philmckinney.com and make a contribution. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help cover the cost for the podcast. And as always, any profits from the contributions are donated to charity. If you enjoyed today's show, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, or wherever you find your favorite podcast. You can find all the links and resources for this episode, along with every other episode going back to 2005 at philmckinney.com. Just click on podcast. I would love to hear your feedback, such as your thoughts on the new format for the show, topics you would like covered, or any questions you might have. Ping me on Twitter at Phil McKinney, all one word, or you can find me over on LinkedIn and Facebook. You can find all the links where I hang out on social media at philmckinney.com. This podcast is a work of passion. It's my way to pay back the time and energy an early mentor invested in my career. His ask of me was to pay it forward. And my ask of you is to pay it forward by helping others know about the podcast, such as posting a comment on iTunes, sharing a show on Facebook, or simply sending an email to someone who you think might enjoy the content. As always, thanks for listening.